gentleman from North Carolina, Mr. Miller, for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Secretary Geithner, you have said today and previously uh, that you and others at the New York Fed became aware in 2008 that there were concerns about LIBOR, uh, that LIBOR was vulnerable right. to manipulation. It's, it's essentially an honor system. There were incentives to misreport. Um, and there were rumors, uh, there were reports in, in the public domain that that was in fact happening, uh, that the New York Fed conducted an investigation, decided that there was a basis for those concerns, um, and passed along the concerns to the FSA and the BAB, uh, Bank of England, uh, as well as to the members of the President's Working Group on Financial Reform. But uh, among the documents released by the New York Fed uh, is a transcript from a telephone conversation on April 11, 2008, between an employee of the, of the Fed, New York Fed, Fabiola Rabazzola, um, and an unnamed uh, Barclays trader, in which the Barclays trader said that yes, they were reporting about uh, 20 basis points lower than what it would really cost them to do it, um, that when they had posted an honest, a correct LIBOR rate, uh, that there was an article that they were coming in higher than the other banks. Uh, there is an implication the other banks were also misreporting. Uh, but said, yes, they, uh, that when that happened, there was an article in the Financial Times that raised questions about Barclays, or the other banks knew something about Barclays that was not known generally. Uh, Barclays stock went down, and so they decided they weren't going to report, uh, they weren't going to report an accurate uh, LIBOR anymore. In fact, um, he said, uh, so we know that we're not, um, posting um, an honest uh, LIBOR, and the reason that they did it uh, was not to have questions about Barclays uh, financial conditions, and this was a month after Bear Stearns, uh, and uh, J.P. Uh, Morgan Chase bought Bear Stearns in a, in a fire sale that uh, New York Fed was involved in. Nearly every creature in the desert fears the rattlesnake, except one. The king snake, 1.2 meters long and covered with vivid patterns. It isn't venomous, but it is still deadly. The king is a constrictor. to bear executives, a questionable practice known as naked short selling was contributing to the steady week-long erosion in their stock price. Obscure trading rules allow someone to sell a share of stock while only providing the buyer with what amounts to an IOU for a short amount of time, until the so-called delivery failure can be resolved. Beginning the day these bets were placed against Bayer, millions of delivery failures began artificially inflating the number of shares that appeared in circulation and therefore deflating the value of each share. It was strangely calm uh, because it felt as though we were being sucked into a vortex and there was very little we could do to um, to fight it uh, after there was certain momentum uh, that, that began with uh, the rumors that, that it was like a, a, a small forest fire that just got out of control. The Federal Reserve is strongly committed to fully employing our authority. A loan facility was announced uh, by the Fed coming by a JP Morgan on the Friday morning and the shares dropped basically 50% uh, in the opening moments. The fangs of the rattlesnake could easily kill the king snake if they strike with enough force. But his venom will have little effect. She's protected from the toxins by a complex of proteins in her body.
the standoff doesn't last for long. How a king snake avoids being bitten is revealed through the lens of a slow motion camera. Using its superior reflexes, the king snake clamps down on the rattler's jaws before they can open. Then the king snake prepares to eat its victim. The rattlesnake is consumed while it is still alive. With the king snake's strong body wrapped around it, the rattlesnake can neither breathe nor bite. Escape is impossible. Snakes are one of this predator's favorite meals. For one thing, there are no arms or legs to deal with. For another, one snake fits perfectly into the other's long stomach. And this was a month after Bear Stearns. Uh, and uh, J.P. Uh, Morgan Chase bought Bear Stearns in a, in a fire sale that uh, New York Fed was involved in. Um, did you know of this conversation? Congressman, I do not believe I was aware of that specific conversation, made aware of that specific conversation, but I didn't need to be made aware of that. Why Because, not? because the concerns about the structure of the rate and the broad concerns across the market about what could be potentially happening, what we but, thought were sufficient basis on which to do the things I, I said I did, which is to, again, this, try to get the... Secretary, this, this conversation is not just about the vulnerability uh, of LIBOR to, to manipulation, but in fact an admission that it, it was in fact being manipulated, that there were false reports being filed by someone who was involved in it. And, and is there any, I asked uh, Chairman Bernanke last week, is there any element of criminal fraud that isn't admitted to in this in this transcript? Well, the, there's, a, there's a, a set of lawyers that will answer that question, and you can be confident they're going to do that. But again, on this basic point, we had a sufficient basis on base of what the market was saying was happening and the way this thing was designed on which to take the actions we took. Yes, I understand that, but did, did the employees of the New York Fed who were involved in market surveillance were there, uh, uh, tell you of this conversation or perhaps others like it that not just, uh, it was not just theoretically possible, but participants in LIBOR admitted that they were in fact misreporting uh, did they? Did were you told that it was not just a theoretical vulnerability, but in fact it was happening? Uh, I believe that, and this is why we did what we did. That this was not. We were not concerned. This was just a theoretical vulnerability. We were concerned about the range of different reports that were out there. We thought were credible. The banks were actually misreporting, underreporting. So it was not on the basis of a theoretical concern that we did the things we did. It was the basis on concern that those reports were plausible and credible, and again, that's why we took the steps we did. Okay, and, but you, uh, uh, the chairman, Mr. Mr. Bacchus, asked you if you reported to justice. You said no, the justice was not part of the federal, of the president's oversight or president's uh, working group. So you did not report this conversation or any others like it to Justice Department. Now that's you did not, did you? Well, I, I want to be a little careful about this, uh, but and my colleagues at the New York Fed are going back over the full records in this case. I do not know what the New York Fed staff did in terms of who else they informed about specific. I don't know that. But, but you did not. No, I did not. You did not. Okay. But I did. Mr. Uh, Secretary, you also said earlier um, that the litigation was certainly possible, was being contemplated. Um, various lenders who had uh, or now have either filed suit or contemplated litigation. Uh, against the LIBOR banks were having paid, uh, gotten paid too little in interest. There was probably no greater lender during that period of the United States government. Are we considering uh, filing litigation, pursuing claims to get back some of the money, uh, some of the interest that we did not get because LIBOR was artificially low during that period? I do not 
know whether we were disadvantaged by this practice. Obviously, we will take a careful look at that. We also don't know what the net effect was of this behavior on those prices at that point. As many of your colleagues have said, there's some people who believe that people who borrowed money generally benefited, people who lent money generally uh, did not benefit. It's not clear that's the case. Week, Mr. McKinley phone to confirm your meeting tomorrow. Strep throat. No, some kind of virus. What's going around? Asian flu. Good one. And your mother called. I'm on vacation. It's your fifth week. Snowed in. Phones are down. But again, that's going to be the process, uh, the subject to a very careful, extensive review by a lot of people in this context. And it's going to take some time for them to figure that out. Gentlemen's time has expired. Gentlemen's time has expired.